Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. Public servants are there to serve the public, hence the name. And they're bound by a public service code of conduct, meaning they can't insert themselves into politics. But that's what one of the most powerful public servants in Australia, Mike Pizzullo, is alleged to have done. Today, Radio National Breakfast and the Party Room podcast host, Patricia Carvelis, on the trove of secret messages allegedly sent by Mr Pizzullo and what they mean for our political system and democracy. PK, this story involves two key characters. There's Michael Pizzullo and Scott Briggs, two names many of us may never have heard of. But this story is really important for all of us, isn't it? Because it goes to the strength of our democracy. Yeah, because it's the role of the public service and the separation from government. So to be clear, the public service exists to give frank and fearless objective and researched advice to the government. It is meant to be apolitical. It is such a key word, the word apolitical, so Mm. that they can serve any master, so to speak. It's vitally important, in fact, to the health of our democracy that public servants don't act as political players. And so when you say these two people are key figures, well, Mike Pizzullo is a very, very powerful public servant. Yeah, Yeah. okay, yeah, he's right up the top of the public service. He's really senior. Well, his job is as head of home affairs and he's there to keep the nation safe. You know, so basically he's in in charge of all the guns, um, which is, I think, an easy way to think about it with all those different uh, elements of what's in home affairs now. He earns a salary of more than $900,000 a year. That's a lot of money. I don't think anyone needs that explained to them. And it's actually a lot more than the Prime Minister earns. So, yeah, that gives you a sense of the power. He's been described as one of the hardest nuts in government. He's worked in the public service for decades. He he was previously the Secretary of Immigration and Border Protection after being appointed by the former Prime Minister Tony Abbott in 2014 and as essentially the CEO of Australia's Border Protection Agency, he was, and people may know him from this, he oversaw Operation Sovereign Borders Mm. And that targeted people smugglers, obviously, the turning back the boat strategy, all of that, which was very much a Tony Abbott government strategy, but had to be implemented by public servants. And important to note, I think, PK, that he's made many a speech about the appropriate behaviour of public servants. In a speech in 2018 to the Institute of Public Administration Australia, ACT branch, he really did demonstrate he was very aware of the requirements of public servants to act, as you said before, apolitically. The public servant cannot be unaware of political happenings. They are all around us. What is important for the public servant is is that one must absent oneself from any partisan discussions and avoid exposure to raw politics, especially as it might relate to electoral considerations or criticisms of the opposition. And PK, that tough nut image that he seems to have comes partly from his appearances during Senate estimates hearings, which are always a bit of fun, I suppose, (laughs) depending on which side you're sitting on. (laughs) Look, it seems, if we're to be clear, like as one of the key people, architects, if you like, or or really senior figureheads of some of these harsh border protection policies, including Operation Sovereign Borders, he certainly is not liked by the left. I think it's fair to say if you listen to some of the commentary from particularly the Greens in the last couple of days, they're calling for his head. He has overseen a litany of governance failures and now interfering improperly uh, in uh, in the political space. Mm. Ultimately taken together, all of those things mean that his position is untenable and he needs to go. And that's because, as you point out, that tough nut image, the way that he's behaved in Senate estimates. Recently, he was up before senators discussing social media and an internal review. Give you another example. In 2014, he confirmed that the then Abbott government had spent $2.5 million on disposable lifeboats to send asylum seekers back to Indonesia. The government won't say how many of these it's bought or how much each of them cost. 
Is it your intention to purchase more? Possibly. We'll, we'll purchase as many as, as are required to, to successfully execute the mission that's been given to us by the government. Which, of course, you know, was a pretty startling story at the time and, and even now. And, and then in 2017, he was criticised for joking when he was asked about the alleged torture of the detainees at Manus Island, where, of course, we, you know, had offshore processing. To just spare us the, the fake sympathy. Well, You've been well, torturing Senator them Kim, for four and a half years. We put up with your editorialising. We can listen, allow the Secretary well, to complete I, I reject, his answer. I reject any assertion that, that, that this department's been torturing anyone. Uh, the only torture I'm aware of is sometimes when we have to appear uh, here. But, uh, <laughs> uh, um, Senator, I can absolutely... Well, I, I, I just don't think that's a... La- I don't I, think I torture can, is a laughing you. matter, it's, Mr Pizzullo. Well, I don't know how to get... So, hard nut, hard head, hard liner on these issues. All right, so, PK, that's Michael Pizzullo. And now we know he had a friend in Scott Briggs. This is the other player in this story. Who is he? So Scott Briggs, you know, kind of a bit of a mover and shaker in the political world. He ran Malcolm Turnbull's election campaign for the seat of Wentworth in 2003. He's a close friend and confidant of former Prime Minister Scott Morrison, one-time director of the Liberal Party and a director of the Cronulla Sharks, Mm -hmm. (laughs) just uh, by the by. Uh, Morrison, of course, is a number one ticket holder there. We heard a lot about the Sharkies during his prime ministership. Um, look, he knows people in high places. He's he's what's known as a Liberal Party power broker, and that's not unusual. Scott Briggs is, you know, a, a Liberal Party operative, being a Liberal Party operative. And obviously, I don't know, and we don't know what the history is, but he's developed some time a relationship with Mark Pizzullo. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we know of this relationship now because the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age and 60 Minutes got their hands on hundreds of these encrypted messages allegedly sent between the pair. They'd been sent over several years and they make for pretty interesting reading, PK. Oh, <laughs> goodness. It really is, isn't it? Because, look, let's be clear about why it's interesting. There's a public servant who's far too cosy with a political operative um, saying things that you don't expect public servants to say. The leaked messages obtained by Nine Media detail years of conversations between the Home Affairs Secretary and a businessman with close links to Liberal Prime Ministers. We're reading these text messages that this man has sent in an encrypted way that he never thinks anyone will read and they've been published. So, Mm. you know, hold on to your hats, right? They appear to show that Mike Pizzullo is using Scott Briggs to influence government ministers, prime ministers and their decision-making. Pretty out there stuff. So let's have a look a bit further at what they were saying to each other in these messages. There's so many, as you say, around a thousand. So let's concentrate on the best of, if you could. (laughs) The best of. You're cracking me up. Okay. Yes. First, it's important to note that there are no suggestions of any exchanges that are corrupt. In one of these alleged messages, he writes, this public servant, Mike Pozzullo, writes to Scott Briggs, in the event of ScoMo getting up, I'd like to see Dutton come back to HA Home Affairs. No reason for him to stay on the back bench, he says. That was sent at 9.40pm on the night before the spill against Malcolm Turnbull in August 2018. In the same week, Pozzullo texted Briggs again about who would serve as Home Affairs Minister and then says... I've alluded to, you need a right winger in there. People smugglers will be watching. Please feed that in. Again, why is this for him to determine? This is a political decision, right? There's many others, of course. The Defence Minister, Maurice Payne, she got a bit of a mention too. I was a bit shocked by this as well. In one of these alleged text messages, Maurice Payne, who is who's actually just recently retired as as a senator after a very long career as sort of leading female liberal New South Wales uh, moderate in the Liberal Party, pretty well known figure, but he describes her as being completely ineffectual, describing her as a problem. Again, He's a senior public servant providing commentary on a senior minister. It's pretty odd. 
Maurice Payne uh, hasn't responded to this report. In another message, he says he almost had a heart attack thinking about Julie Bishop becoming Liberal leader. Again, I don't think I have to explain it to your your podcast listeners. It's it's a little unusual for a senior public servant to be giving uh, his view about a future prime minister mm. potentially. That is rather inappropriate. There's now an investigation into this by the Australian Public Service Commissioner, the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. He says the government's going to be expediting that process. So, PK, it was the Home Affairs Minister, Claire O'Neill, who asked Mike Pizzullo to stand aside. I spoke to the Secretary of my department. I asked him to stand aside while that inquiry occurs. I believe that is appropriate and in the public... And the Labor MP, Peter Khalil, is concerned about the separation between politics and the public service. Impartiality, uh, non-partisan advice, a political advice, these are fundamental principles of a good public service. And so anything that threatens that needs to be uh, acted on very, very swiftly, and that's what they've done. Has Mike Pizzullo and Scott Briggs had anything to say about all of this? Pizzullo hasn't commented. He was asked to step aside and, and has while this investigation um, unfolds. Scott Briggs has confirmed that he had communications with Mike Pozzullo over a long period of time uh, that continue to the present day, but that's it. Worth noting, though, PK, Mike Pozzullo does still have support of the opposition leader, Peter Dutton. Um, I'll say in relation to Mr Pozzullo, uh, he was my secretary when I was in Home Affairs. Uh, I found him to always be professional. Uh, so as we noted, that investigation's still underway, but I guess, PK, whatever the outcome of that, it's got us talking, hasn't it, about the importance of distance between politicians and public servants and protecting our democracy. Yeah, I mean, I think this is quite an important moment for us to kind of look at this beyond just Mike Pozzullo and bit of, have a bit of a stock take, mm. I think, about the way all of these institutions work. They do matter. I know they, you know, for some people getting on with their lives, uh, they probably don't think about how the Home Affairs Department operates every day. But the transparency and proper process ensures that checks and balances are there. So that's why the, the story matters. So we at this point now where this will be dealt with pretty quickly because I don't think the government can have this loom over them. At the same time, because this man has been so controversial in the past, because he's been the hard man in areas that are really contested and contentious, there are people who were outraged that Pizzullo was retained by the Labor Party when they won government over a year ago. The Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, really didn't want to be kind of the sort of Prime Minister that came in and got rid of public servants he didn't like. It didn't. It's not the sort of way he wanted to progress, and yet this has now blown up. And oh, I cannot see how this is a sustainable position for this man to have this really powerful position when so many politicians are now questioning his independence. Patricia Carvelis is the host of Radio National Breakfast and the Party Room podcast. This episode was produced by Lara Corrigan, Bridget Fitzgerald, Anna John and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is David Cody. I'm Sam Hawley. You can find all our episodes of the podcast on the ABC Listen app. Thanks for listening. ABC Listen. Podcasts, radio, news, music and more. 